Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first ever online service for Grand Union Vineyard Church. As always, if it's your first time here, you're very welcome. We're in a bit of a strange situation, but we hope that you will enjoy and spend time with us this morning as we share and praise and worship for our wonderful Father. If you've not already done it, do remember to go to the YouTube link attached to this chat where Rachel, our ministry leader, has created a purposeful worship set for us. Uh, and just remember that uh, it's a bit different. We may try a bit later to do something live, but we're not going to rush anything. So this morning is a little bit different. We are going to be a bit shorter than normal, but we know we're going we're gonna to try our best. If you, have any if you have any technical difficulties this morning, try logging off and then onto the chat before giving me a shout, either on the chat channel, via our Facebook page, or by texting O. There we go. Uh, notices this week, really simple. On Monday night, 4 p.m. till 6 p.m., there will be a drop for non-perishable foods at our Neverfield site. If you can donate anything, please do so. They're gonna be made into packages that will be going out to the community here in Neverfield and Bean Hill to serve those people who really, really need that. If you are self-isolating as well, do let us know. We wanna get in contact. We don't want you to be all alone during this time. Also, as another note, we will be starting up our union groups again next week. Details on how that will happen will be sent out on Monday and Tuesday. Union group leaders will be in touch with you, but do keep an eye out of that and, and chat to them. We're going to be using technology. This is a great, great tool that we have. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get Chris up, and he's going to speak. And then after that, Rachel's going to speak, and I'm going to disappear behind the computer. So as I said before, if you're having any te technical difficulties, I can't even say the word, do let me know, and we'll, we'll have a look at that. So if you want to pray with me, that'd be great. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to gather together here across the internet, reaching people here in the UK and afar. Father, we thank you that even if we can't meet in person, you still meet with us every single day. We pray that your spirit is with us this morning, and we thank you for everything you are doing in this difficult time. Amen. I'm going to get Chris up, so enjoy. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's really good to be with you. It's a bit different, I know, but, uh, you know, the ch church building is closed, but the church is still in business. And so we are still the church because we are the church. A building is not the church. And we, we are in unprecedented times. <clears throat> it's a time of tension for, for all of us. Uh, it's a time of the unknown. And there's the sense for me of kingdom theology being played out. You know, we talk about the already and the not yet. That there's the sense of uh, we don't want to be flippant and say, oh, everything will be okay. But we want to trust God in this time. We, we need to live in that midpoint between fear and flippancy. Uh, I want to say everything will not be okay. Uh, we will uh, uh, struggle. There will be, uh, some of us will lose friends and family. But I also want to say that in that, we still believe that God is God. We need to live with this tension of not being given over to panic, not buying 200 rolls of toilet paper, but also uh, living in a place of faith. So hold that tension. I don't believe everything will be the same again. Uh, we don't know how f uh, now fully what's going to change, but the fabric of society will change. If you look at history, every time in history when these kind of events have happened, uh, the structure of society has changed. We don't know how it's going to change. This is not going to be just our oh, two or three months. We need to be seeking God, how we change in this and how we live in a new reality. Just as a, 
a first thing I want to say, Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. We celebrate you moms. We thank you for who you are. And we pray you would be blessed. We were talking just now that when we can get back together, we are going to have a celebration for Mother's Day then. Um, Rachel said we'll probably be celebrating Mother's and Father's Day together, but that's okay. We will celebrate physically then, but we want to honor you. Okay. Um, I want to say just one thing in terms of self-isolation. We want to be there for you. We want to be the church. We want to encourage you to self-isolate to take time. What you do today has impact for the next two to three weeks. So, so please look after yourself and look after your family. But I also want to say, not to build fear, but also to build faith. I'm reminded of the story of Jehoshaphat. Um, you know, Israel was under attack from the neighbors. They were coming to, to attack them. And in the midst of it, like the psalmist who says, you know, where does my help come from? And he says, I look to the mountains. Where does my help come from? And he says, it's, it's from the Lord, not from the mountains. On the top of the mountains were, were all the Asherah poles and things like that. God uh, was not there. That was man's invention. He said, I look to the Lord, the creator. And I want to encourage us to look to the Lord. You know, when Jehoshaphat was facing this, this challenge, he pressed into prayer. And he said this, If calamity comes upon us, whether it's the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before the temple that bears your name, and we will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear us and save us. He knew where his help came from. He pressed into God. And I want to encourage us, let us press into God. In fact, his prayer ends with this. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Let us be people of faith. In a world that's gone crazy, let us be the, 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 um, the ship of stability. Let the church be the church. Throughout history, that is what the church has done. We, as the church, can make a difference. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Rachel's going to come up in a moment, and she's going to share what we are doing as a church. Remember, we're in a series looking at our vision and what we, we do as a church. We've looked at things like worship. We've looked at youth. And this week, we're going to look at our community engagement. We're a church known for our community engagement. But I want us to remind ourselves what it is. I believe this season now is actually one where um, we are going to be sharpened in our community engagement and caring for those around about us. And I want to encourage you, what is your role? What is your part in that? Will we continue to make a difference or will we become insular and look inwards? Let us be the church that engages community to live our lives for others. Just even this last week, we've encouraged you to have buddies uh, that you pray with on a daily basis over the phone. We want to encourage that, and we'll talk more about that over this uh, next week. But I want to encourage you, let us be the church and make a difference. Rachel's going to come and uh, outline this more and, uh, yeah, just bless you. And we love you and we care for you and we are here for you. Please don't go through this alone. Hi. Um, good morning and thanks for listening today, whichever way you are doing so. Chris has asked me to share today on the topic of community outreach, what that means, what we do, and what we should be doing as a church. I'll admit that when I took on the role of administrative assistant, getting up and speaking in front of you, or being Zoomed, um, wasn't part of the job description, and I didn't anticipate that at any point of my job it would be. God obviously has other plans. I'm going to start with a bit of my story, how I came to be standing here. I grew up going to church, 
As a child, we attended our local church of England church, went to the Sunday school every morning, uh, every Sunday morning that is. Church was just something we did as most of the children in my class at the local church of England junior school I went to did. When I first became aware of church, as opposed to just being there, I was then attending a Baptist church. I'd only gone there because the neighbours gave myself and my sister a lift each week, which gave my mum a break. Dad was working Sundays. And the Baptist Youth Club, the YPF, Young People's Fellowship, was far better than anything the local Church of England had to offer. To attend the YPF, they liked you to go to the church on a Sunday. Bit by bit, what they were teaching sunk in, and at the age of 13, I gave my life to the Lord and was baptised. Probably around the age of 14 or 15, I noticed that the people that were part of the church were different to those in my immediate neighbourhood and other adults that were part of my life. The families that were there had something that mine didn't. Anyone remember the Readybreak advert of the 70s and 80s where they had their breakfast, left their houses in the morning to go about their daily business with that orange glow surrounding them? It was a bit like that. I mean, my family was great. We were loved and secure, but there was, no, there was something missing. Now I'm older and slightly wiser, I can see that what these families had that my neighbours and school friends didn't was in addition to being Christians, they had community. They worked together to make the church work, to provide the youth club, parent and toddlers, pensioners weekly lunch club, boys brigade, play group, holiday clubs, and probably a whole host of other activities which I didn't notice because as a teenager, if it didn't affect me, I didn't pay it any attention. The families that were involved in the church were also friends. The children would call their friends parents, aunties and uncles, the kind of friendships that are more than acquaintances. The families helped each other out, whether babysitting, meal trains when times were tough, and were just there for each other. I decided that when I grew up, that was the type of community I wanted to be part of, and if I had a family, this was how I wanted to bring my children up. Moving on several decades, I never did get the ready brick glow, but I do feel part of a community, and have done so in most of the churches I have attended over the years. There have been times when I have been in dire circumstances and have had a caring support network around me. There have been times when my boys were small and as a single parent when money was very tight. My church family made sure we were okay. I remember one particular period when I would get home from work on a Friday and find an anonymous card posted through my door containing a £20 note and a message to say, get the boys pizza tonight or hope this helps. This went on for quite some time and I never knew who was providing them, just that it was from someone in my church family. There have also been times where I, I have been the support for others that need it, whether it was providing a listening ear or taking meals around, doing, it shop, doing shopping, etc, etc. The building of community is biblical. At its most basic, we can even say that God is community, the whole interactive fellowship of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Jesus also built community. He gathered and nurtured a small community of people that were not the sort of people you would expect to be a core team of kingdom builders, but that's what the disciples ended up. Community is about more than just reaching out to those that are within our church scope. It's about more than just reaching other Christians. Helping each other out is great and we should be doing it, but we should also do more, especially now when there is so much need in our country. It is also important to remember that when we talk about the poor, we don't just mean those that are financially poor. In the New Testament, we are taught that the poor are those that are powerless in society and lack the basic necessities and items they need to sustain their lives. Without resources, without a voice, they lack power, social respect and material goods. It also means that those that are poor in spirit. In the Bible, we are shown that God has a special place in his heart for the poor. Poverty is mentioned in more than 300 verses. So we need to remember that when we reach out to the poor, we don't do it for self-gratification. We are doing it for Jesus. Matthew 25, 40. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Even back in the Old Testament, we can see God's concern for the poor. Deuteronomy 10, 18. 
He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. Deuteronomy 15, 11. For there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy and to the poor in your land. As part of the family of vineyard churches, one of our values is to remember the poor. In the most recent book of our vineyard values, there is a whole chapter dedicated to the subject. In it, we are told that our family of churches lean toward the poor, the outcast and the outsider with the compassion of Jesus. Right from the start of the vineyard movement, our churches have worked to actively serve the poor in the most practical ways. John Wimber was personally committed to calling us to a radical, radically compassionate life in the way of Jesus. We believe that faithfulness to Jesus means that we are faithful to remember the poor, serve the poor, build community among the poor, and love the poor compelled by the love of God. So what do we do as a church which helps us to reach those that we need to? We do a few things. Most of you will be aware of the MK Storehouse. There have been so many exciting stories to have come out of that place and it humbles me every week after a Thursday session. When I offered to step in temporarily after Lauren moved, I didn't really have a true understanding of what the storehouse did and the effect it had on people's lives. It's hard to know where to start with the stories, but off the top of the, my head, some that I particularly remember are the lady who had escaped from a trafficking situation with a small baby and had been placed in a house with no clothing or furniture and just the things she was able to carry. She came to Storehouse on a sorting session when it was closed to guest. For some reason, the previous Storehouse manager, before Lauren, felt compelled to let her in and talk to her. Once we knew the gravity of her situation, Gov and the Storehouse put out an ask for some items. Within a week, we had her house furnished, including washing machine, cooker, curtains and rugs. Another lady who has been a regular visitor since we opened and is a client of one of our partner agencies. Each time she comes in, we sit with her and have a chat and a coffee. We always offer to pray, but she politely declines our offer. The last time she came in, she allowed us to pray with her and seemed to have a sense of peace around her. This was such a breakthrough, especially as the lady is Muslim. The following week, a representative from the partner agency popped into Storehouse specifically to let us know that her client had been to their church and they had, they had been inviting her to come along for four years. She asked what we had done that they, you know, that they couldn't. I've no idea what we did differently, but the guest has been attending that church regularly now for the last three months and has a good support network and church family around her. These are just a couple of examples of what we see at the storehouse. Every week there are different stories. Some are heartbreaking and it has really highlighted to me the problem of economic inequality that we have in our society. I asked one guest why she felt the need to visit nearly every week. We were concerned that she was taking items too often and there was a suspicion that she may have been selling things on. On chatting to her, it emerged that she had two children and they were temporarily housed in a local bed and breakfast hotel in one room sharing a bathroom with other families. The nearest laundrette was over two miles away and the hotel had a service where they allowed residents to use their washing machine and dryer. The charge for this service was £5 for one load of washing and £5 to dry it. This is a normal domestic sized washing machine. How can that be right to charge amounts like this to someone who barely has any income? How can we as a society think that this is acceptable? That this lady needed to spend all the money she had on food and other essential items, then come to us for clean clothing to send her children to school in? The most recent statistics we have on child poverty in Milton Keynes show us that 31% of children now live in poverty. This is up from 25% the year before. It's a shocking statistic that almost one in three children are now in poverty. The effects of growing up in poverty doesn't just affect childhood. It has long-term repercussions. The chair of the End Child Poverty Coalition says, growing up in poverty means growing up trapped. 
it restricts a child's chances of doing well at school, of living a healthy and happy life and finding well-paid work as adults. One child in three, it's a shocking statistic and one of, the, one of those that all of us in storehouse are all too aware of. Another ministry outreach we do here at Netherfield is our community fridge. This wasn't set up to alleviate poverty in our neighbourhood, but to reduce the amount of food going into landfill. It is obvious though the benefit it is giving to some of the guests in terms of reducing their weekly shopping bills. An estimated 8,400 people have benefited from our community fridge since launch. The great thing about this ministry is that it is being run for the community, by the community. I also love how all our projects run alongside each other. You all know that we are keen to get a second storehouse location here at Netherfield and it is a work in progress. In the meantime, a community wardrobe has started here on a Thursday. I was approached by a previous guest of the storehouse whose situation had improved and was wanting to give something back. A children's coat exchange had been happening here over the winter and the lady had been volunteering with them but wanted to do more. I had a meeting with her to go through some details and while we are still fundraising for a suitable storehouse here, we are now ho hosting a weekly clothing exchange during the Thursday morning community fridge session in partnership with the storehouse. Um, yeah, I love Thursday mornings in here. We have community fridge, community wardrobe, and Sarah and Sue host a community cafe. The atmosphere in here is buzzing. Just recently, I received a message from a very excited Maggie, our community fridge coordinator, who wanted to share a wonderful thing that had happened during one of their recent sessions. A young lady that had been, a young lady that the volunteers knew was looking for work she came along to get some food. The volunteers had been chatting and one had mentioned that she was hiring for her workplace. The lady that was looking for work was pointed out and after the session was interviewed there and then and offered the job. She didn't have any smart clothes or shoes for work. So then they went through the community wardrobe items that are stored here at Gov and found clothes and boots for her. Maggie said in her message to me, Everything happens for a reason, and I really believe this was meant to happen. A fantastic sign that Community Wardrobe will have every success going forward. Our most recent project with Community and Outreach is the new Home Educators Cafe, which happens every other Friday. This was Ruth's idea, and I can take no credit for it, but I have seen how successful this is and what a valued ministry it is. On these Fridays, the church building is alive. There are children everywhere, parents from all walks of life, all socialising, sharing stories and networking. The feedback we have had has been very positive. Again, we are seeing people come into a church building who have been hesitant to in the past. People that are so close to finding Jesus and just maybe this is the outreach that they need. This is community. We are seeing people come into churches who have never been before, people returning to churches, people being prayed for that previously would have refused. Isn't God amazing? These are just some examples of what happens when we reach out in a few of our ministries. We also run regular wellbeing sessions, host the winter night shelter on Tuesdays, and wise ones are social sessions for the over 50s. I don't foresee a time when we can ever say we've done enough. There is always room for more. As a church, we're looking into being able to provide a debt counselling service in the future. We are in communication with other agencies to see how we can support each other. For example, at the storehouse, we are shortly to be working with Milton Keynes Council and their assisted employment scheme by enabling their clients to volunteer with us and help them get experience to get back in the workplace. With well-being, the Woofton Community Council are keen to share resources. It's all very exciting. As always, though, there is a but. James and Charlotte said last week that they didn't want to end with a call out for volunteers, but I'm afraid I do. I have two asks. Firstly, we need you to pray for us. If you can just spare a moment to lift the teams up in prayer. The well-being team, Catherine, Desiree, B, 
Betty, Agenta, Anne, Teresa, and Mandy. The community fridge team, Mike, Maggie, Danny and the others. The community wardrobe team, Amy and Mel. The community cafe team, Sarah and Sue. The storehouse team, Alex, Martin, Carrie and Sarah serving on a Thursday and the sorting team on Tuesdays. The workers are few. Matthew 9, 35 to 38 tells us so. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask of the Lord, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. None of our ministries can happen without people. For various reasons, all very valid at the storehouse, we are low on our volunteer base and the number of guests we serve is increasing week by week. I have a wonderful team there, but only three of us are from Gov. The rest are from other churches. It's great to have links with other churches, but our numbers are still low. We can't spend as much time with guests as we would like to, and there's so much more pastoral care we could be doing. We need people for well-being, whether it's making drinks and chatting to people, or helping with arts and crafts activities, or relaxation and prayer. Community fridge need people, people to do collections, people to help with set up and set down. There are no qualifications needed to volunteer at any of our outreach ministries, and I'm not asking people to volunteer every day. I would just ask that you prayerfully consider whether you are called to help bring in the harvest. One morning per week, or one Saturday morning per month. You just need to love people, have compassion, and be prepared to get your hands dirty. It's not always easy, and there are challenges but reaching community and showing Jesus' love through our actions is easy to do. Let's be the salt and light in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. As you can see and as you hear, it's exciting to be around here at Gov. With all that God is doing through us, and there's almost a sense that it's still not enough. Uh, that sense of we're on the edge of something where God will use us going into the future. I, I love that Matthew 9 passage because if you, you know, he says, Go, uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest. And then you move to Matthew 10 and verse 1, which says, and he, he called the disciples together and he sent them out. They became the answer to their own prayer. Let us be a church that is the answer to the prayer uh, that we pray for this world. Let us be a people that go out and reach the lost uh, by getting our hands dirty. Thank you, Rachel. Isn't it wonderful to see uh, uh, how God is just slowly drawing ministries out of people? We've, we've seen uh, last week with James and Charlotte uh, what God is doing, uh, with, with Rebecca and what God is doing, uh, at least... Um, Rachel, uh, the, uh, Rachel Inwood. And <clears throat> next week, we're going to hear from Rebecca in terms of what God is doing in terms of children's church here uh, and what we're wanting to do going into the future. So I want to encourage you. Uh, lean in to what God is doing for us as a church. Let us be the church. The building might be closed, but let us be the church. Let us reach to, out to one another contact one another and pray for one another we just uh waiting for apparently there's some words that dale's going to come and share uh, am i going to share them um okay you do realize I, uh, my old age here this is a song that god gave me to write this morning this is from ruth i have the shepherd and he will take me i have the shepherd and he is enough for me. 
I have the shepherd. He will provide for me. I have the shepherd. He will bless me. I have the shepherd. And he will give peace. I have the shepherd. And he will restore me. I have the shepherd. And so I know mercy. I have the shepherd. I will not fear. I have the shepherd. His presence is with me. I have the shepherd. He is always beside me. I have the shepherd. And he will take care of me. I have the shepherd. And he is enough for me. A reminder to us that the shepherd, you know, that Psalm 23, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his rod and staff is there for us. It's like a story I heard last night. A guy was flying in a plane. A pastor was flying in a plane. And they were hitting turbulence. And they were going up and down. You know, and everybody was uh, um, screaming and getting upset. And he noticed a little girl just sitting there reading her book uh, on the other side of the aisle. And he watched her. And she just didn't seem to even know what was going on. And eventually they landed safely. And he, as he got up, he said to her, little girl, why were you not worried when all of this was happening? And she turned to him and said, my dad's the pilot. I know he's a good pilot. And that's the thing. We have the shepherd. Let us trust him. Any other words? Okay. Let's go into a time of prayer now. Um, let's... You know, we, we're over the internet, but I believe the Holy Spirit is with each and every one of you. He is present in the room that you're sitting now. And so let's just ask that he would come and he would touch. Okay. Someone's going to share. Rachel's going to share. They're going to switch to her voice. <laughs> Technology is wonderful, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to. The other morning I was just praying and um, I just got this picture um, that I felt Father God was just sharing to me. And I was sitting in my house and, and I could just see all the houses um, kind of around me full of people on fire. Um, as they worship God, they just burned with fire for Him. And I saw these houses burning for Jesus and the fire just grew. Um, there were some houses that weren't on fire. But once the people who were on fire came out of their house, they then helped to light fires in other people who weren't on fire. And I just felt that, um, I just was asking God what he was saying to us at this time. And he's going to start a personal revival um, in us during this time which will turn into a worldwide re revival. You know, we've got a sudden expanse of time that, you know, we've got more time to do because we're not going out and being busy with work and, and other stuff, you know, and he wants us to use that time to go deeper with him. You know, this is the time when our faith becomes real. And when we're kind of allowed to go back outside and resume normal life, things will never be the same again. There's going to be a new normal. And the fire that he's placed inside us will be contagious once we leave. Okay. Isn't that a wonderful picture that as we have spent time alone with the Lord, we will, he will set us on fire and we will go out and make a difference. Uh, hear the heart of that. Hear the, the truth of that. Let us not be flippant. And, oh, that's just another word from the Lord. Let us lean in to our relationship with him in this season. Let us press in to who he is as God. There's another word coming. There's, it's a scripture. Uh, Dale's bringing it to me. Sorry. This, uh, Dale will read this one. <laughs> So we have a shared scripture from Sarah as well. So it's Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. 
Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And yeah, it's true. And yeah, yeah. So. yeah. The Lord is with you. He he wants. You know, I don't believe church is ever going to be the same again. I believe we're on an adventure, and God is going to uh, light His fire in us. And let us be the difference in this society. Amen? Amen. That includes every one of you. Let's go into a time of prayer now. Let's pray. And I believe the Holy Spirit is with you in each and every room that, is, that we are linked with now. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, come. Fall in this place. Fall in each lounge, in each bedroom, in each uh, room where people are sitting now. Come, Holy Spirit, and move in the hearts of your people. Let your kingdom come in this land, we pray. Lord, we want to see more of your rule and reign in this land. We want to see more of your rule and reign in each and every one of our lives. We pray, Lord, our Father, which you art in heaven, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let that not just be words, Lord. Let your kingdom come in our hearts. Let your fire burn in each of our hearts that as we go out and as we are going to come to that time when we go back out into the society, that we will be a people who are on fire for you and making a difference. Lord, we want to thank you for each and every person in this church who are involved in the mercy ministries as it were who are involved in, in things like well-being, who are, have a dream for, for debt uh, uh, recovery. Lord, may your spirit come and encourage him. Those that are involved in, in storehouse and in community fridge, Lord, may your spirit be on them. And Lord, those that you're moving to become involved, let your spirit move. Let them be the answer to their own prayer, we ask. Lord, we want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you that we can, even though the building is closed, we are still the church. Okay. Oh, hello, Stan. Stan's just joined us. Um, friends, we bless you. We want to say to all the children, it's been lovely watching the videos as you guys have been in front of the, the, uh, the uh, cameras and we've all seen you. Thank you for being there. It, it, it lightens up our day. It uh, gives us a sense of what it means to be the family. And can I, as we prepare to close, encourage you that if you are self-isolating and you, you are you do get sick, please let us know that we can support you. Even if it is doing your shopping, we'll drop it at your front door. Um, it's those kind of things is where the church becomes the church. We want to encourage you to link into home groups. Uh, there'll be e-groups for the time being, but link in. Don't do this alone. We want to encourage you, set up those buddy partnerships. Phone one another on a daily or every second day. Do not do this alone. We need each other. God has created us for community. Let us be community. The Lord bless you. We love you. And may you, your, his protection be on you. And know we're praying for each and every one of you. Thank you. Amen.